Oh, good day. Uh, one sec. You are tenth in oh, the queue. In the queue. You've heard the expression of his law. That is a law whereby anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Now, there's also something called Muffrey's law, which thank oh, you one sec. for holding. You are fifth in the queue. Fifth in the queue. Okay. Um, uh, Muffrey's law, where which goes that whenever an error is made. Any attempt to correct the error will itself contain an error. We've seen these kinds of things on, say, Facebook chat groups, you know, where, say, a typo is made and somebody outraged at the, at the error blasts into print and makes a typo themselves. And it happened to me with the last video, um, Shared Build Part 1, whereby I referred to a conversation that I had with you about uh, whether to build a skillion or a gable roof and I was coming down on the side of the gable roof but you never saw that conversation so you're probably still scratching your um, you know uh, it was had but it ended up on the cutting room floor so you never saw it and then when I went to correct that um, I shot that footage with no sound, so I wandered around. I wandered around looking as if I was making a silent movie. So, we appreciate oh, one your patience. You are the worst in the queue. Worst in the queue. And out of the red balloon, marry the farmer's daughter. Sleepy heads in the afternoon. Callow the callow the vita. <laughs> Do you ever get these songs suddenly pop back into your head again after, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years and find yourself singing them? <sighs> I do. We should have to the shed. <laughs> The shed we're building is the bus and we start on phase two and um, it's pretty late actually on a Saturday afternoon so we're only just going to do a little bit today but this is going to be the start of the framing for the shed so this framing will serve two purposes of course you know one of course is to support the shed and the roof and everything else but also something to nail the cladding the external cladding and any internal you know shelving or whatever it might be you know windows doors etc too so this post here as you'll recall here this is the one that's on the when you're looking at it, the right hand side and this post here behind it, uh, there'll be no windows or doors or any openings of any sort on this wall. So we're going to start off with framing this and um, that way then we'll have a template I suppose for uh, everything else that we do after that. The, there'll be a, a, a bottom plate down here. And the top plate's already there, but then there'll be studs in between and uh, they'll be 60 centimetres on centre. In a build where everything that can go wrong will go wrong, put your trust in the dog visor.
It's Sunday now and we've got the right hand side wall up completely as you can see framed out with the uh, with the studs in and now we're going to have a look at the right front which is going to have a window in the middle of it so let's start tackling that So today we got the um, oh, these uprights here, these studs screwed in on the bottom, and there was a bit of a twist in them, so we had to take that out. But we've done that, um, and also we got this bottom plate here in, and the top plate in there. So it may not seem like much, but slow and steady does the trick. Dog Bride has given it the seal of approval and we've actually accomplished a fair bit today well I suppose it depends on what you measure a fair bit against you know and if you measure it against a professional team of <laughs> shed builders we probably haven't done much but we've actually done quite a bit as far as we're concerned and that is that and I'll, I'll totter on over you saw that we had done the the um, right hand side uh, now that's completely framed uh, with uprights. We have done this front right side, we already done those, and then today what we did was these there, and Millie's just taking a final look at it. Um, this one here, and this one here, so that's that left hand side, and the left hand rear, as I spoke about, now have the top and bottom plates. And you'll see by this actually the extraordinary rise because that post or sorry that bottom plate that millie's looking at with astonishment is actually level with the horizon but you can see of course the dramatic fall um, with 
you know, I don't know, like 30 centimetres at one end and 10 at the other. But that's pretty well it. That's it for today and um, bloody good day's work. So, see you tomorrow. Last year I spoke about getting new camera gear and um, and I did. But I <laughs> she went crazy. And this camera that you're looking at now was the one that I'd replaced the GH4 with. So this is the GH5 and it actually has become now my favourite or at least my sort of go-to, you know, standby camera I suppose because it's so similar to the GH5 because you know, once you start to understand menus on modern cameras, you know, it's kind of difficult then to change to, to different ones, but um, <laughs> change I must, because I have now um, the, the Panasonic GH5, which you've just seen, the S5, which I'm currently using, I have an older Panasonic um, G1, I think it is, or GF1. Uh, I have a, um, a Fuji uh, XS10. I have a Canon um, 5D Mark III and I also have a Pentax K. So I've got a stack of cameras and to be perfectly honest I don't use most of them. Um, now the Canon and the uh, Pentax is probably a reason for that and that is that while they're amazing cameras, they really are, they're not very good with video. Um, okay for, um, you know, a lower res video, but much, much better for stills and, and I don't take too many still to be perfectly honest so why do I have them well I suppose I have them because I got carried away and well, because I love the camera gear to be perfectly honest and it's kind of nice to pull them out every now and again and go and take a few photos anyway what we're going to do today is to um, have a look at the windows and I've, I've been doing a fair amount of research you know if you can call looking at YouTube videos research but let's face it, they really are the best way of finding out how to do things and uh, here I am making a video about that very thing. But the issue is that the, the windows that I picked up are casement style sliding windows. They slide up and down and they've got the slots and the grooves you know, on each side in order for that to happen. Originally I'd considered mounting them to open. Now the difficulty then of course is that because they're they've been built to slide up and down I don't know that the sides are necessarily strong enough to be able to handle being hung off the side particularly as they're quite old and therefore has the glue you know dried will it crack will will I end up just supporting a side and everything else just falls out on the ground the first time that I use it and there's not enough width really in them you know to put in a you know a decent hinge because they were never designed for that so we've decided to opt for fixed windows and then find some other way of uh, providing ventilation rather than opening a window and let you know the breeze flow through. So let's go and have a look at those windows. So this is the window and uh, as you can see it's kind of got these little kind of feet on the bottom of it and you can see that groove down the side where it slides up and down in the casement and my concern was you can actually see this crack in here too was if I were to hang it off the side that this might break off completely and then you'd be left with a pile of sticks and busted glass so we decided then to mount them as a solid window they certainly look the part and um, a couple of things need to be done you know one of course is to take those little feet off for a start and then the second is to provide a frame that can then be mounted in the framing that's um, that will be um, built into the wall so we'll, we'll, we'll have a bit of a play with one and um, just see what we come up with so 
So we've sworn the, the feet, for want of a better term, off each of those window panes and um, what I wanted to do was test hang it, which of course is not easy seeing as there's no framing, but what we can do is this. You can see it, it's just really hanging <laughs> arbitrarily somewhere near the middle of the uh, of the, where it's going to go. Now I don't have a tape with me so I can't possibly tell you how far that is from the top or from the bottom but there's a couple of issues you know one of course is that you want to be able to see out of it you don't want it below let's say a workbench or something like that that's in there but at the same time too you want to have the top roughly level with the top of the door and here there'll be double doors but they'll be about two meters tall now i don't have a tape with me but let's say you know this is two meters so that's probably sitting a little lower than it should if we go up to that two meters you know roughly up here which is you know the 20 centimeters or so on here then this will clear the ground by you know about 1.2 meters uh roughly and um and uh therefore a workbench inside you would easily be able to see through the window out to the outside but it's always a compromise because every time you put in a window you lose shelf space the same with the door so we have to make sure that we put the window where it's going to be of the most use <laughs> without necessarily compromising the interior Yesterday, uh, apart from <laughs> getting the mower out and giving myself a bit of a clean up, <laughs> I went to Woolies um, and uh, there was an old fella outside and when I say old fella I mean even older than me and I know you find that hard to believe but he jumped off his um, mobility scooter and uh, I struck up a conversation with him and um, Look, we, we would have spoken for, oh, you know, probably the best part of half an hour. Uh, he told me a lot of things, you know, about his, his a couple of medical issues that he'd had, including that he had had uh, prostate cancer. And you would know if you've been following me for a while that I had treatment for that just this year. Um, he told me he'd lost his wife. He told me that he uses the mobility scooter because his ankles... Uh, you know, lets him down a bit, you know. So, I mean, I, I guess the, the point of that is that if I hadn't spoken with him, I don't know whether anyone would have. And it used to be that, you know, we'd we'd go places and people would strike up conversations with us or say good day and all of that kind of stuff. But I think that, you know, these days we tend not to do it quite so much for all sorts of reasons. You know, we're too busy looking at our devices or uh, you know, we, we have a lot of fear. What will happen if I strike up a conversation with this person and I then have to get out of it or they attack me or or they, or, or they just talk nonsense. Who knows, you know? But I, I think that every now and again we ought to just try and put that aside, you know, and, and, and have a chat to people um, just so that they know that there are human beings out there who will take the time and spend a little time. He, he explained that he, um, he'd lost quite a lot of meaning in his life when he, when he lost his wife because he, they'd been together for who knows how long, you know, 40 or 50 years. This fellow was 85, you know, so they could have been together for 60 years or something, you know. And uh, he, he, with the loss of his wife, he'd lost a lot of the, the kind of desires to do things that he used to do. You know, he said, for example, he used to go out bushwalking and stuff now, and clearly, obviously, he's getting a little older and maybe can't do that. But nevertheless, going for, um, uh, you know, trips into the bush, of course, you know, nowhere near now as enjoyable as they, as they were before 
he lost his wife. Further to that, um, he failed uh, a medical and now he can't even drive. So, you know, he tends to be, I suppose, you know, housebound with his trips down to Woolies, maybe some of the only things that he does. And if we take a little time to just say good day to folks, I think we'll probably make their life quite a bit better. So that's my request to you. Spend some time talking to strangers. Go and pet a dog, though not this one. Despite her, despite her good looks, is not actually friendly to strangers. Looking around for one to take a chunk out of now, huh? Okay, come on, let's go and get a cuppa. Millie and me had another cup of tea and then we went home. Look, that's about it for this um, uh, second part of the shed build. Um, I know we haven't accomplished a lot, but it's already going to be about 20 minutes long and I don't like to make videos that are too long, otherwise, well, you might fall asleep. But we'll be back with another one very soon.